Eyes of the hawk. Ears of the wolf. Strength of the bear. Speed of the bull. Hey guys, Shannon here with Come Again TV, the only place on YouTube where all geek culture collides. If you're new to the channel, welcome. Don't forget to subscribe and make sure your notifications are turned on so you don't miss out on a single History and Origins video. Also, do us a favor and like, comment, and share with your friends. Airing from September of 1987 to February of 1988 via first-run syndication, Bravestar revolves around the title character Marshall Bravestar, an Indian galactic space marshal who resides on the planet of New Texas, which orbits three suns. Now I know, I know what you're thinking. Why did I call him an Indian and not a Native American? Simply because there is no America in this. In fact, Earth isn't even mentioned. So for the sake of this video, he's an Indian. The idea for Bravestar began with Tex Hex, his main adversary. Tex Hex was created by Filmation staff artists in 1984 during the development of Filmation's Ghostbusters. Lou Scheimer found the character fascinating and pulled Tex Hex from the Ghostbusters cast. He asked Arthur Nadell, Filmation's Vice President for Creative Affairs and Art Director John Gruzd to develop a science fiction western around the character. As the concepts took shape, staff writer Bob Forward fleshed out the writer's guide and eventually co-wrote the feature film script for Bravestar the Legend with writer Steve Hayes. Marshall Bravestar was voiced by Pat Fraley and is best known for calling upon his spirit animals to perform brief superhuman feats. When he does this, he calls upon the eyes of the hawk to enhance his vision, ears of the wolf to enhance his hearing, speed of the puma to enhance his speed, and strength of the bear to enhance his strength. It's never shown, however, if he can use these enhanced abilities simultaneously, as he generally only ever used them one at a time. The closest he ever came was using them in quick succession, almost like rapid fire. Bravestar was joined by his chief deputy, 3030, voiced by Ed Gilbert, which was a talking horse that could transform his body into more of a humanistic figure at will. His weapon of choice was a large blunderbuss from which he projects directed energy. He called this blunderbuss Sarah Jane. Judge J.B. McBride, who was voiced by Susan Blue. She was the only judge and lawyer in Fort Curium on New Texas. In battle, she uses an electronic gavel, which she called the Hammer of Justice. This was given to her by the Prairie People. Shaman, also voiced by Ed Gilbert, an otherwise unnamed mystic capable of teleportation, time travel, psychokinesis, and near-omniscient clairvoyance. He is Bravestar's mentor and foster father. Bravestar would often telepathically contact Shaman for advice on how to handle certain situations. And Deputy Fuzz, voiced by Charlie Adler, who is a member of the Prairie People, whom Bravestar affectionately called Lil' Partner. Fuzz is typically a character of comic relief, but also plays more serious roles at need, and was the first of the Prairie People to befriend humans. Together, they battle Stampede, voiced by Alan Oppenheimer, the chief villain and ringleader of the outlaws based at Hexagon. He's a monstrous, partly skeletal brachiosaur, and apparently the last of his kind. He seldom appears in battle directly, but is usually the source of his subordinates' evil plans. He is also the arch-nemesis of Bravestar's mentor, Shaman. Tex Hex, voiced by Charlie Adler, is Bravestar's rival, opponent, and counterpart, distinguished by his withered appearance and lavender skin. Considered Stampede's junior partner, Tex Hex, originally just called Tex, was a greedy Curium prospector who briefly co-owned a Curium mine with Angus McBride, JB's father. He crashed a Curium overloaded ship while heading home from New Texas and was revived and given a host of magical powers by Stampede. While these are the two main villains in the series, there's just too many subordinates within their gang to properly go through in this video. The people of Shaman and Bravestar's tribe discovered a great power. Unfortunately, the evil Stampede also desired it. Shaman encouraged his people to protect their power plant at all costs, which was a decision he soon came to regret as Stampede soon attacked, devastating the tribe, causing everyone, including a young Bravestar, to fight back. Stampede managed to gain the power he sought, and the tribesmen made ready to flee the planet in totem pole-shaped rocket ships. But the power plant's energy proved even too powerful for Stampede to absorb and as he expelled it, he destroyed his own horde of bronchosaurs and the entire planet. All but one of the escaping rocket ships also went up in flame, leaving Shaman and Bravestar the last of their tribe. From that moment, Shaman could never forgive himself for what his actions had cost. When their rocket passed through a newly formed set of stars, Bravestar was unexpectedly granted four spirit animal powers. 
The series, though short-lived, produced a memorable premise, a toy line, and a direct-to-video movie which tells the story of the original discovery of Kirio and how the galactic marshal Bravestar came to battle Tex Hex and his master Stampede. It also introduces his allies JB, 3030, Deputy Fuzz, and the Shaman. Mattel released an action figure line based on the series in 1986, a year before the series premiered. Each figure had a unique action feature and was packaged with one or more Curium Nuggets. Bravestar was produced by Filmation and Group W Productions to be broadcast before Filmation shut down in 1989. Reruns of the show aired on QO Night Owl from 2010 to 2013 and on the Retro Television Network from 2010 to 2015. Filmation produced 65 episodes of the series along with a 91-minute direct-to-video movie, Bravestar the Legend, which was released on March 18, 1988. The series nearly produced a spin-off entitled Bravo. However, during production, Westinghouse sold Filmation to an investment consortium named Paravision International, led by L'Oreal Cosmetics Company, in 1989. Filmation's library is currently owned by Universal Studios, who acquired the property from DreamWorks Animation on August 22, 2016, for $3.8 billion. A Brave Star video game was released for Commodore 64, Amstrad CBC, and ZX Spectrum in 1987, and is a side-scrolling shooter game. In an article by Diane Wagner from the LA Times entitled The $200 Million Man, Marshall Bravestar isn't just a plaything, but a marketing mega concept. A look at the serious business of toy merchandising. She states, with $15 million worth of toys being produced, the movie and the television show its exposure was expected to earn $200 million or more within two years for filmation, as of December 21st, 1986. The link to that article can be found in the description below this video. If you enjoyed that video, make sure you hit the subscribe button right there so you stay up to date on all things geek culture. Also, go ahead and check out one of these two playlists on the side for more videos just like the one you just watched. I'm Shannon from Come Again TV, the only place on YouTube where all geek culture collides. Take care, geeks.